are here at Valle Luna in Chandler with Perry head coach Preston Jones. Coach, thanks for coming out and taking the time tonight. You're finished up with spring. Overall, how did it go? Well, thanks for having us. We, we're having fun here this evening. This is a great, great night. We appreciate the, the recognition of these high school coaches and players. Uh, spring went awesome. Went really well. I think uh, we saw a lot of improvement. Saw a lot of young kids step up. And uh, we, we can't wait to uh, get into summer routine and get going next fall. You almost got to the top of the mountain last year. It's hard to get to the top of that mountain. Have you seen a refocused effort this spring from your kids to try to get back to that 6A title game and, and take the next step and win it all? Yeah, I think that those, those boys are real hungry. I don't think they're satisfied with just getting there. I think they want to get right back to it and have another shot at whoever that may be. But uh, they're hungry, but yet at the same time, they know we got a lot of work to do. In terms of the young kids, obviously you're filling a big position there at quarterback. What's the status of that? Well, that's a good question. We still we we got two two young men that are unbelievable at the quarterback position. Deshane James, who's backed up last couple of years for Brock and has a little bit of playing experience there, in my opinion, may be the best 2019 quarterback in the state, or one of them. And we have some talented 2019 yep. quarterbacks. Uh, and then we have Chubba Purdy, who's Brock's brother, who's coming up in the JV and got some varsity time last year. Who's a very very big talent. He's bigger than Brock. He's stronger than Brock. He's faster than Brock. Um, and he, he really grew as a quarterback this spring. In these uh, three weeks, he got better every day, which we were real excited. And then DeShane was, was outstanding in his leadership and how he ran the whole offense. So we have a, a really great problem at Perry High School with our two quarterbacks situation that uh, could probably play anywhere. Are you a fan of the seven on seven, all the summer passing league things, all the extracurricular activities no. that happen? No, not at all. Why? Uh, I, I think it's a joke. I think the state of Arizona is going the wrong direction with football. I think we're doing too much. I think uh, too much is going to eventually kill the sport and ruin the spirit of the sport. I think when you look at the NFL level, they have rules and regulations to limit how much they can use those guys. Uh, you go to the college level, they have limits, they have hourly limits, they have all kinds of stuff you can't do in the offseason. We see our kids more and we work more with our kids year round than college and NFL. And in my opinion, that's not the right thing to do for kids. Uh, I don't think it's the right thing to do academically. I don't think it's the right thing to do for multi-sport athletes. Mm -hmm. I think it deters kids from being multi-sport athletes. And if you look at our offseason, we had more injuries this offseason with kids who played football only. All of our wrestlers and track kids and basketball kids, no injuries. But these kids that decide they're going to focus on football and do these seven-on-sevens and all this ridiculous stuff are the ones getting hurt. Do you feel like you could kind of get Arizona high school coaches together to kind of say, hey, like, be on the same wavelength with that and kind of prevent Arizona high school football from moving in that direction? No, I don't think so. Because um, again, we, we talked about and discussed it in length with our coaches association and everyone and I, and we said, hey, you guys are gonna sell out. And then as soon as someone sells out, then they feel like they need to do it to get these kids. They feel like it's a re I'm not going to attract kids if I'm not doing what everyone else is doing. It's keeping up with the Joneses, per se. And uh, I think there's a lot of, and then there's a lot of transition with high school coaches. And there's newer and younger guys that come in and they think they have the answers, and they think that's the way to do it. But you see the longevity of, of the high school coaches these days is not quite what it used to be. You know, you don't see the guys 20, 30, 40 years uh, like you used to because, again, the year-round stuff, the burnout, the lack of family time, um, it's hard on families, it's hard on on coaches and uh, there's a lot of expectations but yet at the same time there's not the financial reward that these college guys get.